Driving a monster truck can make you feel 10 feet tall, but by season's end, battle fatigue starts to set in and bravado begins to shrink. Today, though, emotions will swell and reckless abandon returns to the game plan because this race marks the final shootout of the 15-round Penda Point Series campaign. And the pervasive attitude in the pits is wind them tight. The off-season is for recovery and time to relive moments of glory. From the Indiana State Fairgrounds in Indianapolis, it's the Tire America Fall Four-Wheel Jamboree Nationals. The sun shines brightly over the Indiana State Fairgrounds here in Indianapolis. But hey, the sun's been shining on this Ford truck and this driver, Dan Runte, all season long. In our last outing, he was knocked out in the semis. But because of a breakage on Fred Schaefer's Dodge, Runte got back in and won. But as we documented last week, he has already clinched the Penda Points Championship. There are a lot of teams that are sorry to see this season end because they're just now developing some momentum. And here with that story is Army Armstrong. Gary, another word for momentum is confidence. And finishing the year on an upbeat note is very, very important. And that's exactly what we're seeing at Indianapolis this weekend. Give you some examples. Gary Porter, the privateer we've been talking about all year long. Chevrolet combination. Quick qualifier today. He's looking good. In the first round, we had kind of a unique pairing by a couple of other teams that have turned the corner. Pam Vodders with the boogeyman and Kurt Dandy with the overkill. They drew each other in that first round, but both of them had smiles on their faces because they found what they've been looking for all year long. The Hall brothers, they've turned the corner. So what we're saying is all the big guys better watch out because even though they can't win the national championship this year, next year just may be the year the privateers boogie. Well, here's the round one matchup that Army was alluding to. Mark Hall, the far lane, taking on Paul Schaefer in the near lane. Well, the Hall brother team have been working, hammer, clawing, doing everything all year long, and it finally came together on that run. And Mark Hall took the victory. There's the time, and he was with Army. Mark, the run you've been looking for all year long. Everybody seems to be turning their luck around right now, you guys included. Yeah, we've been, we've been working at it all year. It took a year to co get everything coming our way, but I think this weekend we finally got things turned around and uh, starting to happen. We tore up some stuff here, so we got to get busy on this, but I think we can get it fixed and try to get back in there. More highlights now from round one. Alan Pizzo and Fred Schaefer. Now, Schaefer takes an easy win. Something lets go in Pizzo's Predator, so he was out of competition, and Fred continues. More highlights from round one. Ken Deppi against Eric Meager. And we would have some problems for Ken Deppi. Deppi in the Rampage Dodge. Two-wheel drive only. Only the rear tires were getting the horsepower to the ground, Gary, on that run. And so there's a look at the, the big foot of Eric Meager with more coming your way from the State Fairgrounds in Indianapolis. Welcome back to the fall four-wheel Jamboree Nationals here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds, ready for the round two lineup now. And listen up, we have to explain the executioner did break. He'll not make it back to round two, so the Monster Patrol will go instead. And Samson, your fast loser, will make it. Moving Violation replaces Rampage as the second fast loser. But, Gary, the story's not over yet because as Gary Porter sets on the starting line, the officials are waving off his competitor, Brian Wells made him check his vehicle to see if it was in four-wheel drive. It was not. It was only in two-wheel drive, so Brian Wells gets the wave off. And he obviously is very disappointed with uh, his new vehicle, so his day is done here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. These two did meet up now in round one. Gary Porter in the near lane took the win from Brian Wells. Now, once again, highlights from round one competition. So Porter now will have a single in round two. Okay, now why is this an important rule? Real simple. Four-wheel drive. All four wheels have to be able to put horsepower to the ground. It's a safety factor also. If you lose the front-wheel drive and only have rear-wheel drive and they know it, you can get the truck in all kind of bad situations. All right, a 515 on the bye run. There's a look at Fred Schaefer in the barefoot dodge as we are ready for our next pairing. And he'll be going up against Dan Runte in the Power Wheels Bigfoot. Dodge against Ford, but before that, let's go trackside and talk to Gary Porter. Gary Porter's climbing out of his vehicle. A lot of, a lot of weird things going on today, but I, I appreciate you giving Brian that chance to come out there. He, he was trying. 
Yeah, I knew he was trying, and, you know, I was getting hot. Uh, you know, I w really wasn't getting aggravated there on the line. I was just had a concern about my motor getting hot and, and not wanting to restart. And, uh, you know, they was doing what was right. You know, I was just caught up in the middle of it. Some comments there from Gary Porter as we're ready now for a Ford Dodge shootout. The Power Wheels Bigfoot once again. Dan Runty has already clinched the Penda Points Championship out of St. Louis, Missouri, the final event of this series. And he goes up against Fred Schaefer out of Pontoon Beach, Illinois. This could possibly be the last time these two trucks meet this year. This could be the most important run for Fred Schaefer. Because if nothing else, if he beats Runty now, he can say, I got you last. Schaefer took him. I think Schaefer took him. The crew certainly thinks so. And Schaefer of 482. Now, Runty had been the fast ET of round one at 488, but that time, man, Fred shot him down, a 482. Fred came to the line with blood in his eyes. Believe me, he wanted this win. And look at the margin of victory. Right there it is. The dodge by a fender over the Ford. Here's Fred. Congratulations, it looked like you really had it loaded up on the starting line. I did, Army. Uh, every time I come up against them guys, we come up with a couple tens somewhere. 482, now it's fast time of the weekend. Uh, pull it right out. I think it's called adrenaline. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Second in the point standings, but maybe uh, too little too late as far as Fred was concerned for the championship. Pam Botters and another four. This is a van, the boogie van, to be precise. And she will stage against Paul Schaefer. Pam and her team have come together. They've been looking for this weekend all year long. We told the story of the engine builder coming over. You know, she, her driving ability has never been questioned. And this man here, Paul Schaefer, he's a strong runner. It just seems like all year long they qualify in the bottom half of the field and have to run some of the baddest boys in the sport from that top half. Today it's not working out that way. Paul Schaefer is a good monster truck driver. He's a world record holder in mud racing, trying to adapt to the monster sport. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, Pam got him. Botters got him in the buggy van, and once again, she, uh, yeah, she does a little half, uh, half spin down there to a stop. She is a crowd favorite. Five seventeen for Pam Botters out of Hagerstown, Maryland. Corporate America, keep your eye on this young lady. She can sell some product for you. Check it out. She's not afraid to go head to head with anybody. I would love to see her land a big, fat sponsorship for uh, the next season in the Boogie Band, but right now she has to be elated, and she's with Army. Well, what can we say? You got everybody in the grandstands on their feet. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm really proud to be at this position right now, and um, I'm glad they're all pulling for me, Army, because our team has worked so, so hard, you know. We got our motor running good. Our trannies are hooking up. Just The suspension working perfect is working perfect, and uh, I couldn't ask for a better team right now. But um, I would like to take an opportunity to thank a couple people. And uh, that's uh, Dave and Mike at Rustmore Transmissions. They're the ones who's been building it, getting us down this track as fast as we can go. Pete Rosine, our motorman, and my husband and the team that works so hard at home. I want to thank all of them. And, of course, her husband is Mike Vodders himself, a monster truck competitor. So she will get ready for uh, another round of competition. There's a look at the doghouseless Samson truck of Dan Patrick. And he will stage against Eric Meager and Bigfoot. It's kind of the tail of two trucks. Meager, the young rookie coming in, a good team. St. Louis, Missouri, Bob Channer. On the other side of the ledger, Patrick has had nothing but bad luck all year long. The front end is just part of the story. It's been a tough year for Patrick. Yeah, we want to take you back to qualifying and, and show you what happened and, and why all the damage to the front of the Samson vehicle. Now, this was in qualifying for a previous race. Watch the landing. He'll lose the doghouse and literally wipe out the front end. Yeah, he completely just washed it away. Samson and the high-tech trailer team are just going to have to regroup and set up again for next year. And this is what happened in round one. He goes up against Dan Runte, and Runte would lay down the low ET of that round, and Samson would have to come back as a fast loser. And so here we are staged now for Patrick and Meager in round two. Meager by about a truck length as Eric Meager knocks out Dan Patrick of 5.05. You know, Patrick's got to have nightmares over those blue oval boys. 
Every time he looks up, there's one in the lane next to him. And when he goes across the finish line, the guy's in front of him. A look again at the start, and, and Eric just drilled him right through the start. Yeah, he got exactly. a good hole shot. So Eric Meeker takes the victory, and he's down with Army. Is it a horsepower track or a driver's track out there today? Well, I mean, that's a very good question. Uh, the general consensus is this is both. Actually, on the first uh, first set of the starting line to the first set, actually, it's not a horsepower track. You actually have to finesse it over. If you overpower it, you're not making the ET time. Once you get over that set of cars and get down, it's all horsepower to the other end. So, finesse and horsepower go hand in hand in all forms of motorsports, including the monsters here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Well, on your side of the ledger, you got all the horsepower, but over here it's Candy Apple and Chrome in a moving car show. Stay tuned. We are back. Pam Botters is ready for the semis, but Team Bigfoot is thrashing. Let's go down track side to Army. Gary, what you're looking at is not a pit crew competition. Well, yeah, I guess it is because Two Bigfoot teams are swapping tires. The Bigfoot truck is still in competition of Eric Meegers. He is changing tires, rear tires, with the Bigfoot sponsored truck, Power Wheels, of Dan Runty. As a matter of fact, Runty is actually working the lug wrench, taking the rear wheel off the right side of the vehicle. What they're doing is Runty's rear tires seem to get a better bite on this track, so they're switching them over to Meegers' vehicle to help him get the bite. So the thrash continues there in the pit lane. Well, the final race of the year, the final four, the Crusher, Foot, Van, and Bigfoot. Ironically, you got Chevrolet, Dodge, and Ford. There is parity in this sport right now. A look at Carolina Crusher, Gary Porter, a leading independent, continues to uh, be a factor each weekend. Uh, he won the overall seasonal championship a couple of years back, and there's a look at... Uh, barefoot with Fred Schaefer, and Fred has had somewhat of a disappointing season, at least the, the middle portion of the yeah. season. He started hot, man, middle bottom fell out of it, and he's finishing on an upswing. He's got to turn that around. So we have corporate back Dodge against independent Chevrolet. Now, I've often wondered why somebody from General Motors doesn't get behind Gary Porter. Man, he sold a lot of Chevrolet trucks by his action. He's a class guy. Hey, what's the story? Finally, the Chevrolet grillwork noses into position to stage. Oh, good side-by-side -side race. You call it. Looks like Fred Schaefer by about that much. Fred Schaefer, a 488. A 488 for Fred Schaefer. And Porter runs a, a 493, but Schaefer by just a whisker. Look at the attitude of both trucks as they settle down in no man's land right now. This brute horsepower at this point then they pull the trigger and fly them out the other end. Well, it was uh, the whole shot, plus it was horsepower that won it for Fred Schaefer. He's climbing out to talk to Army. Fred, an awfully good run with a 488 time. 488. Uh, boy, this Dodge Ram sure is a nice truck, Army. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, if Gary's selling Chevrolets, yeah, he is sorry. selling Dodge products. The boogie van, the Ford of the young lady from Maryland, and there is the truck from St. Louis. Bigfoot, Eric Meager in the Ford, Pam Vodders in the boogie van. Earlier we showed them changing the tires and everything. If you don't think this Bigfoot team is not worried about this young lady, you are wrong. They know that she and her team have finally jailed. They're spooked by her actions. As a matter of fact, the boogie van is an appropriate name to be in the opposite lane from them because Eric Meager knows, as a matter of fact, changing the tires and everything. See, they're trying to tweak this truck closest to us to stay up with her. They actually realize or believe that she has an upper hand right now. Let's see if the tire change does work for the Bigfoot team. Good hole shot. Yeah, but there's a problem with the uh, boogie van. Yeah, something that a drivetrain let go. The tires did what they were supposed to do. A 499 tells you that, so they're going in the right direction with the tire change, but Pam Vodder had something to let go because you can see he moves, she doesn't. So something in that drivetrain did not operate properly. Just have to wait for another time to go in the winter circle. Right there, you can see the smoke coming out of the rear window of the boogie van. So uh, certainly, as you indicate, something wrong in the drivetrain, the transmission. We look at the torque transfer and look at this jump for Eric Meager. He had this thing won right from the beginning, but there is still pit work to be done. Here's Army. We got a unique situation here. We told you the tire story a moment ago by changing the rear tires. We're now 
in this round, since Eric Meager's made it to the final, they're going to change the front tires. But the special events people have a rule that say only three people can work on a vehicle at a time. And they're reminding the Bigfoot people, we're watching you. We want no more than three people changing those two big old tires. Back to you, Gary. And Army, speaking of our friends from the uh, special events, these uh, jamborees are part of the special events performance series featuring a weekend of four-wheel fun. Check out the manufacturer's midway. There's also several categories of show and shine competition. Contact a special events promotion company to find out when a jamboree will be coming to your area. Once again, let's go back pit side now, and here's Army Armstrong with Eric Meager. Eric, to say things have been hectic is kind of an understatement, isn't it? Oh, you're not kidding, Army. Like I said, we're making lots of changes out here today, doing everything we can to get this truck down a track fast. So this is a very tricky track here today. Lots of sand, not a lot of traction in the beginning. Down between no man's land, we can get the firestones down and dig down through there. As long as we keep making the horsepower turn in the times we are, keep it one piece, I think we'll do all right. And the uh, tires keep rolling in Indy's Tire America Jamboree. Welcome back to the Indiana State Fairgrounds as we are prepared for the finals. That is uh, Fred Schaefer moving out to uh, take on Eric Meager, the barefoot against the Bigfoot. But hey, what would this show be without some highlights of tough truck competition? Here's Jim Week in the off-roader. This is a battle-scarred vehicle, and here with a closer look is Army. These 4x4 off-road guys are kind of a unique breed, and they've all got their own way of doing things. For an example, good old Jumbo takes care of the tailgate. He wields a muffler clamp to it. It's environmentally friendly, as you can tell. He doesn't use any water. He never washes it. Speaking of the environment, he's got a bird nest. Little baby robin's in there. Plus, he's got a breakaway body, a latest style breakaway body. In case he gets any kind of problem, the body will just break away in the vehicle. Looks like it's been lightened some by previous uh, involvement, if you will. The top's been pushed down, but he's got a roll case to protect himself there. Speaking of protecting himself, the roll cage is just part of the safety system. For an example, the door was actually welded together here. And if those wells don't work, you always got your backup system. But one of the most unique features I found on Jim's blazer was the fact he couldn't find any exhaust headers or exhaust pipes to go underneath the vehicle. So he put some on that go out the front of the vehicle. Jim really likes to hear this thing run. He hears it all the way down the track. The results of a deranged welder. That is the, uh, the truck that puts the tough in tough truck. And this has got to be, ultimately, the ugliest truck on the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Now, on the other side of that ledger, Steve Conaway comes out in a GMC, a Jimmy Blazer, and he has to tag that big tire with the nose, but looks what happens to the back of his vehicle when he goes over the big old tire at the finish line. He tags the tire and loses the left rear. And still goes on down the track. The crowd's loving every minute of it. It's almost like he doesn't know he had a problem. We are ready for the big boys, the final shootout. This is it, the final race of the season for the Pinda Points Championship. Dodge against Ford. Fred Schaefer in the barefoot Dodge against Eric Meager in the big foot Ford. It's kind of poetic just as it comes down this way. The Pinda Points people step up and support this series. We appreciate it. It's bringing everybody up. You know, this is one of these deals. The pie gets bigger. Everybody gets a bigger piece of it. Factory team's racing now. The final race of the year. Gary, it's been an honor to work with you, but let's just see who's going to take this one. Both crews wait. It's been a year getting here. The Dodge, the Dodge of Fred Schaefer by one, a half fender army of 5 0 0. Going to make the winner go by a whole lot smoother when you win the last race of the year. Well, he's had some down moments this season as the crews uh, congratulate each other, but it's been a tough year at times for Fred Schaefer, but he comes on strong in the end, finishing second don't in take the anything, Points Championship. Don't take anything away from that meager kid. He's a racer. You know, this just shows the sport is going and growing, and we're glad to be a part of it. Well, let's go down and talk to our victor. Here's Fred. Well, Fred Schaefer, congratulations to you and the Dodge Viper team. A, a tremendous day of monster truck racing. A tremendous year, really. Yes, it has, Army. And uh, I want to thank my team and the, it, the rest of the crew. And it, it's been real well, real good for us. And, um, you know, the times we set and everything, we're real happy about what we're doing this year. We've set some record-breaking times, and we feel real strong about what we're doing. Well, once again, Dan Runty wrapped up the standings a couple of weeks back. But Fred Schaefer takes second, then Eric Meager. Gary Porter, and Pam Vodders moved from 7th to 5th this weekend. Ken Deppie, Dan Patrick, Paul Schaefer, 
Kirk Dabney and Alan Pizzo rounding out the top ten. Our congratulations to Fred Schaefer for Army Armstrong. I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news and an exciting video release from Diamond P Sports.